Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa, if you're new here. For today's video, we are gonna update my moss pole tutorial. It's been a year, you guys, it's been a while. That video is so old, and I don't have a video on the wire poles. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how I make one, and I'll go over everything that I'm using. This is gonna be a very quick, simple, easy tutorial. It's not gonna be long and drawn out. I'm gonna keep it straight to the point and everything that you need and how to make one of my wire poles. I do encourage you guys to check out my moss pole playlist. If you have any questions, I will link it up here. There's probably about 15 videos in that playlist. I have the old tutorial, I have moss pole extensions, I have like how I start plants on poles, how I care for them, water them. Everything is in that playlist, but if you have any questions, definitely let me know. And yeah, let's get to it. I will zoom you guys in closer when I start making these here, but I just wanna quickly go over the supplies that you need. I often get asked about the moss that I use and We'll just start with the moss. This is the Better Grow brand orchid moss. This is very cheap and inexpensive and convenient for me. It's not the best quality. I will say that this is like $5.99, $6 a bag here. And roughly one bag is good for one pole. I only have five bags and my wire makes six poles. So I'm gonna try and spread this a little thin. I do have one more bag of better quality that I can use if I have to, but I am like out of moss. Next up is the wire. And and this is the wire that I use. This I get from Ace Hardware. It's a local hardware store to me. And I actually purchased this online because they were out locally. They have, this is technically called hardware cloth. It is a coated metal, so it doesn't rust or anything like that. And it's vinyl coated. So this is technically five feet long and it's 30, 36 inches high. So it's three feet. When it's rolled out five feet, it makes about six poles with this wire. When I make poles, I make all six at a time because you're gonna need more poles, especially as your plants climb. And yeah, it's better to have more on hand than to make just one at a time. It's way too much work and effort to make poles sometimes. Your future self will thank you for that. I haven't been able to find this length on Amazon, the three feet, 36 inches. So I will link Ace Hardware's this one that I get from there down below on their website. If I, I'll do a quick search on Amazon. If I can find something this long, I will link it. But if not, I will link the Ace Hardware one or you can check your local stores to you. But I highly recommend um, the three feet. It's just a good standard pole height. And yeah, next you're gonna need some kind of wire cutters. This is not the best wire cutter by any means, but it's all that I have. This is the worst part is cutting the wire. Your hands are gonna be very angry at you. You're gonna get sores. You're gonna get scratched by the metal once you cut it. You're gonna get little calluses, blisters, whatever it is, but it'll be okay. Your hands will feel better after a few days. So just warning you, the cutting the wire is the worst part. And the last thing you're really gonna need is just zip ties or cable ties. These are four inches and they're just black to kind of be concealed with the pole. This is a big pack. You can get these anywhere, local hardware stores. You can get them off Amazon. On. So I highly recommend the four inches. They're just not too long and they're easier to work with. And the last thing that you're gonna need is water, of course, <laughs> to moisten the moss. Ugh. I have a big bin filled with some water and I'm probably gonna have to add more water. You wanna moisten the moss first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna, while we're making and cutting the wire, you're gonna let this moss get hydrated. So you're gonna open a few of these and plop them down into the water and they will get hydrated. You can't really build a moss pole with dry moss. It has to be wet first. I know I said this wasn't gonna be a Q&A, but how much moss you pack inside is really dependent on, I guess just, I just, I don't weigh the moss. I just pack it until it seems full. You don't wanna pack it too tight where roots can't grow into it, but you wanna pack it tight enough that you can easily water the pole from the top. So just keep that in mind. You definitely need a lot of moss, probably more than what you think. When you're working with moss, it's gonna be extremely messy. So the area, area that you're working on 
put a towel down, do it outside. You can easily sweep away the mess. I would not recommend doing this indoors. It's gonna be a huge mess. All right, so I'm gonna zoom you guys down and we're gonna to get to cutting this wire. All right, so we are zoomed in. So we are just going to open the plastic. Now, when you undo this wire, it is gonna fly open at you, so keep that in mind. And each of these individual squares, so you're gonna to wanna to count 15. I do each pole at 15 squares across. I think that's just the perfect standard size for me. So I unravel a little bit at a time. And I don't really wanna flatten it out too much because you're, you are gonna to have to bend it in that pole shape. So on the very end, I just count 15 squares and I will make a cut. So 15 is right here where my finger is. So I'm gonna cut below that. So that is my starting point. You're really just cutting this all the way down where you made that indention. So I made the indention here. So we are gonna cut on the pole with our wire cutters all the way down. Again, you're gonna be preparing your hands for a lot of cutting because the cutting is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> I'm already getting tired and I didn't even barely cut anything. <laughs> All right, one thing is cut. I get in my mood, sometimes I will cut all the wire at the very beginning, or sometimes I will cut per pole. Like I will cut to give my hands a break so I'm not cutting so much wire at once. I will cut, do this pole, and then cut again. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna just cut this one to show you. But whatever you wanna do, you can cut all your wire at the beginning. So this is the edge of the pole like already. So where I cut these sharp ends are very pokey because it's wire. So just keep that in mind. You can cut yourself very easily. And since this was the edge and the package, it has these, these little tips are longer than I like. So I just cut those off again. It's more work. You don't have to do this part, but I do because it's just too pokey for me. So I cut the ends off on this side. It's just more cutting, but it is what it is. You don't, again, you don't have to do this. Okay, <laughs> so this is one wire cut on both sides. I don't have none of the little pokey things. It's still very pokey, but I cut those off. And so next we're just gonna fill with moss. Now you wanna leave about roughly, I don't know, I don't really count how many squares. You wanna leave a good portion of this part empty on either side, whichever side you want to do. Cause one side, you know, is gonna be in the soil. So you wanna fill one side with soil. And if you're extending, you don't want moss all the way down to the end because you're extending over the existing pole that's filled to the top. So you wanna leave a portion of the pole without moss. So just keep that in mind. Like uh, normally a pot would usually go up to here. So however much you want to leave empty, just only fill with moss from like here all the way down to the end. And I kind of roll mine too, cause it is wire. So you're gonna have to bend it. And this is where I usually get cut with the ends. <clears throat> you kind of want to shape it a little bit. And I will oh, turn this side and shape it. And then I will finish shaping once I get the moss inside. We are back. So we are just gonna start filling our pole with moss. I just make sure to wring it. You just want like, when you go to squeeze it, not like a ton of water drips out. And you're gonna to want to let these poles dry after you fill them with moss. You don't want 
to store them when they're wet, especially if you're pre-making them. If you're adding a plant on right away, it's awesome because the pole is already moist. But if you're just going to be storing them, make sure you let them completely dry first. I'm going to leave them all outside here when I'm done to let them air dry. But it's kind of loosely fluff all the way down and I'll fill this more because you want to have it pretty like compact in here when you go to close it. And depending on your moss, you may have like stringy bits that you can remove or woody pieces. Once you zip tie this, you can't really add moss in here that easily. So I would fill the whole thing with moss, even though you're starting a plant down like really low. Uh, to, to make the ease of watering more from the top, you're gonna want to um, fill this full all the way. It's a lot easier to add moss in here before um, you zip tie this shut. You see how I'm layering this? You want this pretty full. I don't worry so much about the top because I can easily stuff a little bit more moss up top once I close it if it doesn't get full enough, but you want it pretty full. Right, that is pretty packed. I feel like it's pretty even. So you can start zip tying now once you have it filled with moss. And then you can shape it more once you close it. And these are really easy to pull together. You're just literally gonna zip, zip tie the two ends together. And I just line the pole up so that it's even. And you're basically just going to feed the cable tie through each of the end holes and you're just going to pull it tight. And then you're going to do that all the way down. I usually skip every, I don't know, maybe five or six holes and I put a cable tie. If you're just doing an extension, I would leave these two zip ties out and then you want this open so you can slide the pole over, you know, but if you're just making a pole, you're just gonna zip tie it all the way down. I like to bend here in the middle just to shape my pole a little bit more. What I like to do, so you see the pole has a lot of little like fluffies. Once this dries, I will take my shears and cut these little fluffies off so that the pole is more like aesthetically pleasing. That's something that I've learned. Instead of like trying to poke all the excess hair down, the excess moss down, I called it hair. It's easier to take my shears and go up and down or with a pair of scissors and just like cut all the fuzzy extra off and your pole looks more, more smooth. And then all you do is you cut all the zip ties. Now when I cut these zip ties, the end is pokey here in the back. So what I like to do is to turn the zip tie around so that the pokey end is into the moss. And so the smooth end is on the back and that way you don't have to accidentally, when you're picking your pole up, like your hand gets caught you know, with these cable ties facing out. So I turn them so the cut end is down. I don't know if you can pick that up at all. 
So that's a little trick that I do. So the sharp pokey end, I will literally just twist it until the pokey end is facing the moss. And then you can pick your pull up without really hurting yourself. There we go. And then I'm gonna back you guys out and we'll look at this a little bit further away. We are done with the pole. All right, so here is our pole all done. Again, when this dries, I'm gonna cut off all the stringy bits here and just to make it more aesthetically pleasing. But this is the top and this is the bottom here. You know, this is for soil or when I do the extension, I'll probably cut a few of these zip ties and re-zip tie it once I slide it onto the new pole. And the back is completely zip tied. It is round. It can roll without a problem. And if I need to add a little bit more on top, I can, depending on, um, I use a watering globe. So sometimes I push it down a little bit too far and there's not enough moss in here and I'll have to add a little bit more. So sometimes I do that, it just depends. But for the most part, you want like a pretty good amount of moss. I would say I probably used one of these packs. So this is 1.3 liters. I don't know how many grams that is. I don't know. Probably I would say roughly one of these per pole, maybe a little bit less. So yes, that is it. That is how I do my tutorial. So I am going to make the rest of these off camera. I just wanted this to be a quick updated little tutorial on how I make these. I hope you found this helpful. And yes, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. But if you have other moss pole questions, definitely check out my playlist. I have lots of informative videos in there. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you again soon.